banned Azure AD because I felt like pronouns would be a thing and it would be super cool if I could have an app and show pronouns in there. Very, very short about me. So hi, my name is Luisa. Um, I'm an M365 and Power Platform consultant based in Germany. Um, I'm an MVP. Um, I blog at m365princess.com and you will surely find me on Twitter at Luisa Freese. The best way to, of course, build something like that, like um, a component for a people card, would be Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And it's pretty amazing how easily you could do that in code. The problem with that is that those components of Microsoft Graph Toolkit, they are not available in Power Apps. So I talked about this before and I will talk about this again. So um, I would love if Graph Toolkit would be available in Power Platform natively. Until to that point, I would just like keep on um, creating my own components that look like MGT components, but in fact they aren't. So I was a little bit disappointed that even in that MGT component for this uh, people card, there are no fields for pronouns. And that comes back that in Azure AD, there is no field for pronouns. And I was like, but there needs to be a way so that I kind of just like only locally, just like update some value, but that this is that just like in Active Directory and that I can then query this with Graph. So um, what I wanted to do or what I did is I created um, a directory extension for Azure Active Directory in Graph Explorer, which is just like the easiest way how to do this um, by um, associating a new property to the user object. So we can do this with the user, with the group, with devices, and so on and so forth. But I decided to do that with the user because I wanted to add pronouns for a user. So that's just like made sense to me to um, do this. When we do that, we create this property, but after that we need to patch a user object with this new property that we created. And after that, we of course want to check if that new property and the new value for that new property now is in place. So we we're going to check this as well. And after we see that this is going to happen in Graph Explorer, we need to bring the power of um, the Graph API into Power Platform. And that in, can only happen through a custom connector, uh, which we first need to create um, in order to bring those calls into um, a Power App. And then we will use that custom connector in a Power App to display these new pronouns and to patch those new pronouns that we want to have on a people card. So this is what I have in mind. I would love to demo this just like um, and see what we have. So the look that I was aiming for was something like this. So you can see this is a people card. We have this here in dark mode. Um, should be working in default mode as well. And you can see we have just like a couple of tabs and we have um, some skills and just like um, information that is usually uh, surfaced in um, Office Delph. Yes, so this still exists. Um, and this makes it just like easy for people to retrieve the information about other people that they are likely to work with. This is what we're aiming for. Um, how is this going to work? So first, of course, we need to create that um, extension um, for Azure Active Directory, but um, we need to have an app registration first in order to do so. So um, I will quickly just like pull up Visual Studio Code because there's my terminal and I will register an application. Um, my favorite way on how to do this is um, CLI for Microsoft 365. So we go M365 AAD app at we provide it with a name, we tell it it will um, need to have a secret, we will give it some um, permissions and we will um, grant admin consent. Just like hit enter. Yes, I should update. I know this. 
and uh, it provides us with all the values that we are interested in. And the most important value now is the object ID. It is not the app ID of uh, this app that we just registered because we will need this to create that extension uh, property. So what we will be doing in Graph Explorer, so it's v1.0 and then go for applications slash then I will paste in my new object ID and I will go for um, extension properties and um, do this. So what we're going to do right here, I want to have user pronouns and I want to associate that with the user object. This is a get, so this of course needs to be a post. We'll post this and I will get the 201, which means that has been created and it also returns here the name of that new property, which is always extension then an underscore. Then this here is the app ID, not the object ID, but the app ID of the app uh, registration and then the name that I gave it here. So we will grab this here because we need it later on. And now I would need to have a user ID because I now want to patch a user with a new pronoun. So easiest way how to do this is just like to see who am I. So I will get slash me. I will run this. Doesn't matter if there's a request body in here because with the get request it will ignore this here. Um, and I will see. Okay, so this here is my own user ID. So what are we doing right now is I'm going ahead and say, okay, so I want to patch and I do want to patch users and there is a specific user which I want to do this. So this is my own ID. Um, that should be um, doable for that. And now I will delete this and say, okay, that should do the job. Um, and I copied the name of my new property. And now I will not just need to provide a value for that. In my case, it should be she, her. And now I will run this query and it will say 204, which is no content, which means that succeeded. In order to know if that worked, um, you would assume that I could just like say, okay, so get this user. And of course, we can we can try this, but this will not return my pronouns because they are only um, returned uh, when I specifically select this. So I will say I want to have that property and most probably display name as well because it's just nicer to do that. And once I do that, I see this is my name and these are my pronouns. This is what's happening behind the scenes. So let's see how we do this in a um, custom connector. So I already created a custom connector. It points to the graph API. I log in with, um, with credentials from an app registration and I defined four actions. In this case, um, I will show you two of those. One is the get user and get user points to slash users slash user ID, which I will then uh, provide dynamically. And of course, it, um, it has this uh, select query um, as well so that I can show you this here as well. No, it doesn't show here, but um, in the test um, it does show so that I can um, I can put in um, all the uh, properties that I want to have returned and in the patch pronouns. Um, it is the same endpoint, but I'm patching now. I will provide a user um, ID and I do have uh, a defined body and this body is just like the um, extension and a value for that so that I can make the same request that I did uh, previously in Graph Explorer, but with a custom connector. I created a nice application. In this nice uh, Power Apps um, application, I have my people cards over here. So you can see it can expand, it can um, collapse again. I can um, I can select um, different um, people here. I'm here um, as well. You can see my pronouns are she and her. Um, I can even tap here through uh, through the different um, tabs. So this here is a component that I uh, created and it uh, gets the uh, presence status 
for um, all the people I work with from the um, presence API on graph. So this is a pretty cool thing. So let's um, select Alex. So Alex right now has no pronouns. Let's give him um, he um, him pronouns. So there is a submit button. I would just hit that submit button um, and refresh this. And you can see now um, Alex has he him pronouns. So how does that work? Um, in that submit button, it is um, super easy. Um, I would just say the graph connector. So this is the name of my custom connector. I will call the action patch pronouns and I will pass in uh, a user ID so that user ID comes from my component. So this is an output property. It's the selected person ID and I swear it's just a user ID. And uh, then I pass in a value for the name of that extension. And I know it looks ugly, um, but trust me. So this is just the, um, the, the very same thing that we saw previously in Graph Explorer. And um, then I pro provide the value and that is just whatever is in that um, text input box. And after that, I will reset that text input so that this is clear again. Um, and that's the entire magic of um, how to extend Azure AD with Graph API in Power Apps. Um, right short maybe about the component itself that is um, quite interesting one so it has a gazillion of uh, nested containers of course um, to make that happen and you see um, it still needs a little bit of um, polish so there um, is some bug still involved so i will provide the sample a little bit later um, but i already blocked about the solution and um, i think david can paste in uh, the link as well here um, but what we, what essentially what we do is to um, to display those pronouns is the very same thing that we saw in uh, the Graph Explorer. It is again the Graph Connector dot get user, so the action that I showed you. Then, uh, as this is inside of the component, not outside of the component, we do not need to leverage um, an output um, property of the component itself, but we can just go for the um, gallery. So that here is the gallery and whoever, um, wh whatever is there selected, then the ID uh, property, and then we're going to select. So and I selected display names and skills and extensions and the extension for the user pronoun. And then I only want to return um, the pronouns, which have this super ugly um, uh, property name, but still it works, and therefore this is um, she and her. And with that, uh, quickly back to my um, demo, to my slides. There we go. So what we need to so what you need to remember is it is just the slash users endpoint. So this is a super powerful endpoint for literally everything that you would want to do um, um, with a user and uh, for the components. So one gallery, the nested containers for every tab and then every container in that app. So this can be a little bit intricate, but I promise I will uh, publish that um, as a sample and then uh, the presence API and user slash ID to get the skills, the about me to get responsibilities, just like all the info that is usually surface in um, in Office Delph. And um, blog post is here, sample is coming soon. And with that, back to you, David. Excellent, Louisa. Fantastic. I love how you're using technology to be more inclusive. This is a great, great example. So all those links are in the chat, everybody, and we've got some opportunities for you to collaborate with Lisa coming up soon. Mm -hmm.